Hi and welcome to this module on physical storage. In this module, the following items are discussed and demonstrated. We'll first have a look at disks and aggregates, then we will check out disk types, also containers will be discussed, and we deal with aggregates and how to create them. We will determine the rate group sizes and we will grow an aggregate. Now how does this work? Client data that enters an ONTAP controller will be stored in the ONTAP environment. And it is stored efficiently, which means that you use as little disk space as possible. It is a scalable environment, which means that you can grow horizontally as well as vertically. Adding more nodes to your cluster means scaling out horizontally. And adding more disks to the existing environment means that you scale up vertically. Also, if you set it all up correctly, you will have a highly available environment. A NetApp ONTAP controller has disk devices to store client data. These disk devices or drives can be of the type hard disk drives and of the type solid state drives. Hard disk drives have moving components. They spin and they have read and write heads that move across the spinning platters. SSDs do not have spinning parts. These SSDs are, because of that, a lot faster than hard disk drives. NetApp controllers can have hard disk drives only they can have hard disk drives and SSDs combined, and they can have SSDs only. A NetApp array that has hard disk drives or hard disk drives and SSDs is called a FAS array. If a controller only has SSDs, then it is referred to as an all flash array. To list the disks of a controller, you can run the command disk show. Among other things, this will list the name of every disk and the type of the disk. Also, it will list the owner of the disk. A disk can be owned by one of the two controllers in an HA pair, but we'll take a look at that later. To view the aggregates that belong to a node, you can run agar show. This command will list all the aggregates in a cluster. So if you, for example, have a single node, it will list all the aggregates of that single node. And if you have multiple nodes in your cluster, then it will list all the aggregates of the current nodes. So the aggregate command will list the owner of the aggregates and the size of the aggregates along with the available and used space. Also, if you want to list the number of disks in an aggregate, you can add the dash fields option to the aggregate command and then enter the disk count argument like this. As you can see, this first node of cluster 1 has one aggregate and the aggregate has four disks. And for the second node the same thing goes. Now, what about this high availability? An aggregate is not just a collection of disks. An aggregate is a collection of smaller groups of disks called RAID groups, which together form an aggregate. The availability or redundancy is at the level of the RAID groups. So, how is this organized? A RAID group or a stripe is a grouping of disks that have one, two or three disks that hold parity information. Parity means that these drives contain information about the data on the other disks in the RAID group, so that if a disk in the RAID group fails, the data that was on the failed disk can be recalculated from the parity information. So, as an example, if you have a RAID group of 8 disks, and you configured this group to have 2 parity disks, then 6 disks are used to store data, and 2 disks are used to store parity information. Now, even if you would lose two disks in this RAID group at the same time, the RAID group would still be able to serve as data because of the parity. One parity disk per RAID group is referred to as RAID 4. Two parity disks per RAID group is referred to as RAID DP or dual parity. And three disks per RAID group is referred to as RAID TEC, which stands for triple erasure coding. The number of parity drives is determined when you create the aggregate. So in summary, scalability is offered by the possibility of growing your aggregate, and availability is offered by parity devices in the RAID groups.